What's going on guys? Andrew Pellick Hockey here back again with another video. If you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. Lots of Leafs playoff content uh, coming up. Hopefully lots more games to come. But in this one, the Toronto Maple Leafs take, take game two. 5-1. to one. Montreal had the one nothing series lead after that very, very close and uh, emotional Game 1. But the Toronto Maple Leafs take all of that emotion and they pour it into this game, finally showing why they were first place in the North Division this year. 5-1, man, that's, that's a blowout. That's a real good game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And obviously, as you can see, they did it for this man, Johnny T., they did it for themselves, but they did it for Johnny T after that first game. Um, we'll look into some numbers here, and then we'll get a little bit um, more into the uh, you know deeper side of what went on. So the uh, shot totals were 34-23 in favor of Toronto. The face-off percentage due to Matthews and Felino were just... They were cooking in the face-off zone, 66% uh, to 34%. Uh, the power play was 0 for 1 for Montreal and 2 for 6. The Leafs finally get a couple on the power play. Uh, penalty minutes 24 to 14, obviously looking at those power play numbers. The hits were much closer. Montreal obviously was one of the most physical teams in the NHL this year. Uh, at one point, and I even believe it was towards the end of the season, Montreal was number one in the league for sure. Uh, in terms of hits so 44 to 36 the Leafs were a lot more physical tonight and I called for that in my game one review uh, in terms of blocks the Leafs had 19 Montreal had 16 giveaways 15 to 12 uh, Montreal had more now in terms of the goals that were scored Kakanyemi scored his first of the playoffs after being in the press box uh, for the first game and uh, he threw up the four in representation of the four guys that uh, you know he was in the press box with and it's kind of like a, a you know a band of brothers things you know there's a lot of memes and stuff going around about it I don't really have that much of a problem with it um, I think it is funny the memes and, and whatever I'm definitely taking part in it but um, celebrating in hockey no problem with it and uh, this was more of like a, a little tribute thing to uh, the guys up there in the uh, in the press box. Now, uh, the Leafs ended up tying it up uh, a few minutes later. Jason Spezza with the nice shot cutting right in front of uh, Wayne Simmons. They had a funny clip there of them on the bench. I thought that uh, it was a nice shot, but nonetheless, 1-1. One, one. Then Austin Matthews off of the sweet play. Oh, and by the way, the first goal, the Jason Spezza one. Bogosian got an assist, and he definitely deserved it because he had a monster shift. He threw a couple big hits. The puck ended up out to Spezza. Just a beautiful, beautiful play by Bogosian. You usually don't say that too often because the guy uh, is more of just a uh, just a physical threat type of thing. But he was definitely, definitely the reason why the Leafs um, had an opportunity to score that goal. Uh, moving on, like I said, to the Matthews goal, um, that nice deflection. Like if you watch hockey and you see uh, a play like that and you see the defenseman basically just aiming for the goalie's pads, you know that the hockey IQ is there. Absolutely amazing play by Justin Hall to deflect that off of Price because Price had no chance but to uh, kick out his leg or at least to try to deflect it the other way. If he would have tried to make another move, that puck would have went right through his five hole. So a perfect deflect off of his pads. Matthews tie or doesn't tie. He gives the Leafs the lead with his first uh, of the playoffs. He had a big game with three points. Uh, just a just a great game from him. Rasmus Sandin ends up scoring from the point after the broadcast team was saying that he wouldn't be a threat from the point. Montreal wasn't respecting the shot. He ends up finding uh, a hole through the arm uh, of Carey Price. Just a nice slap shot from the point, uh, and it was 3-1. And the review for that was ridiculous. I'm sorry, there was absolutely no goaltender interference there, and the fact that it took however long it took was a joke. I mean, you need to stop with this review stuff that the bench can take five minutes to decide whether or not they're going to, you know, review a call and then take 10 minutes for something that wasn't even close to goaltender interference. And this goes for the Leafs too. If Sheldon Keefe and Maholtra and whoever else is on the bench and, and upstairs, they're all going, oh yeah, you know, wait a second, wait a second. No, that's, uh, I don't want to see that crap. I don't care what team it is. Do not do that. Toronto, Montreal, Pittsburgh, Washington. Washington, Boston. I don't stop with this five minutes to decide whether or not you're going to make a call. The, you should only have 30 seconds, really. 
you watch it once you hear it from upstairs whatever you make the decision and and that's just it i'm sorry that's ridiculous but um anyways three one maple leafs then we had the third period where the leafs just kind of took over the game uh because william nylander scored after a matthews post which gave matthews his second assist um of the playoffs and uh his third point of the game Nylander has two goals in two games. Nice to see him producing uh, in the playoffs as well. Uh, I believe he's had a decent uh, little playoff run in terms of uh, his points overall in the playoffs. But I'll have to look into that again. But, uh, you know, nice little two goals in a row for him. Willie the Kid, uh, right top corner um, over Carey Price, who was kind of sprawling on that. But uh, I believe Nylander had two or three points in this game too. Yeah, he had two because he assisted on the empty net Kerfoot goal. Again, it was a nice play. Uh, by Nylander and you you seen Matthew say nice F and pass after that one uh, went in there and they were tapping gloves but 5-1 uh, you know the penalties a lot of people were talking about it it's funny that playoff hockey exists when Montreal is very physical and you know probably doing some things that they shouldn't be doing and then the Leafs do it and now it's all of a sudden a problem and it's and it's not playoff hockey anymore people are going towards the slash that Simmons did at the end there probably <laughs> excuse me mm -mm. didn't need to happen jesus didn't need to happen see I'm, I'm i'm coughing on all this uh, this i'm sick of this bs that's being said i'm getting actually sick from it but um literally that slash probably shouldn't have happened um but then if you watch the play before it like did you literally watch the like what happened he got slashed right before he slashed back was it a harder slash yep but he got slashed he returned the favor it, it's so stupid like they're they're clipping a, like 0.5 seconds of a clip and not showing the entire thing and it goes like that for both teams there's been some things where somebody like simmons has done something and then montreal retaliates or you know um weber does something toronto retaliates um or you know let's just say kerfoot does something and then Sherratt retaliates it, it's going both ways this is the playoffs they're physical the leafs are both the leafs and habs are both doing things that they probably shouldn't be doing that aren't legal plays but they're letting it go it's like i don't agree with that fully but i mean the officiating has been terrible all season like, why are we surprised it's going into the playoffs that both teams are getting penalties that they shouldn't be getting or, you know, whatever. Just the the player Department of Player Safety, the refereeing, everything like that has been awful all season. I don't know why people are expecting it to change in the playoffs. And if your team is doing something and then the other team retaliates, well, then you probably shouldn't have done it in the first place and expect the other team not to retaliate. It, it's... It's just very funny to, to see how those things go. Um, there was a lot of very, very risky hits thrown by both teams in the first two games. But if, if one's going to be let go, then another one's going to be let go. That's just how it is. And we, we've seen that from the beginning. Um, it's going to be a rough game three. I'm sure it's going to be a very rough game three. Montreal will be at home. And then it's a back-to-back -back on Tuesday uh, where the Leafs will be st will still be in Montreal for game four. We'll have to see if uh, they're going to play Campbell both games or if they're going to give Freddie one of them. Uh, I think it just you know depends on if the Leafs win uh, their game on, uh, on Monday. So definitely a good series. Series tied at one. Uh, the Maple Leafs and Habs, always, always a fantastic series to watch uh, in terms of their history. I have not gotten a chance to watch these, but watching clips, looking at just all the stats between them. But And it's not even just like, oh, just their, um, the playoff series, just watching them in general is what I should have said. Just watching Montreal versus Toronto growing up, uh, not necessarily in the playoffs, but growing up, it's just, you know, a, a historic rivalry. And uh, th this is going to be a, a really fun series. We'll have to see if Caulfield draws in the lineup. I haven't read too much on that. Uh, but get well. JT still at home. Um, Habs fans, Leaf fans, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, again, call me a Leaf homer if you want. They're my favorite team. And uh, if you're a Habs fan, you're probably going to get the response that I'm being given that you're a homer as well. So um, anyways, it's all in fun. It's it's whatever. After the games are over, who cares? But anyways, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Peace.